what is curriculum design? What is learning design? I'm a learning designer uh, with the, the RCMP at the moment, and I'm sitting in my office sometimes, and people come in and say, oh, well, I want you to develop a course. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so what do I do first? Well, there's, you see on the screen here, there's a stool. And a stool, in order to be stable, has to have three legs. Well, uh, same with curriculum design. Basically, three legs of curriculum design. The first leg is the planning leg, the why and the what. The why refers to, well, why is it a good idea in the first place? The second one refers to, the what refers to, what is it that we want students to know? What do we want them to be able to do? What skills do we want them to be able to show? And thirdly, what attitudes and values do we want them to show after the course is, is finished? So that's the first leg of the stool. Once we've done the why and the what, then we get to the how. And that's the implement, implementation of the curriculum, the teaching of the curriculum. And finally, the third leg, very important leg, is the evaluation. Well, and there's two different parts. There's three, actually. There's one is how, how well did the students do? How well did the teacher do? And then how good is the course? What's the, uh, how good is the, is the content? How good are the activities? Um, course evaluation, program evaluation is, is a very important thing to do. So we've got the three legs of the stool. It's also important to align the what of the curriculum with the how of the curriculum and also with the evaluation aspects of the curriculum. And we'll talk more about that as we go into the course. So there's the, the basic idea of what's involved and what you'll be doing. You'll be, you'll be first of all, justifying why the course that you want to teach is valuable and should be taught. Then you'll be deciding on what should be in the course, what you want the students to know and do and what attitudes you want them to have. You'll do a little bit of the how. You'll do a lesson plan. You'll also do a schedule, which is part of the, the why and the what. And you won't get too much into the evaluation now, perhaps a little bit with your lesson plan. The evaluation is really 32-30, and we'll, you, you can get to that later on. We won't worry about that right now. Okay, so two hats you wear. And this is an important slide because many students mix this up when they're first looking at curriculum design. The first hat you wear is your curriculum designer hat. And that is a very distinct thing from your instructor hat. With your curriculum designer hat, you're looking at the why and the what of the curriculum. You're, you're deciding what to include, what not to include. When you put your instructor hat on, you're thinking of how should I teach this? So keep this in mind when you're going through this and developing your curriculum documents that you don't want to mix this up. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about more about this when we, we actually get into the lesson planning. Okay, let's take a look now at the curriculum design process that we'll be doing in this course. And we'll start with this gentleman who's looking through a telescope into the future. Uh, that's because we start with the present and we go to the future. In other words, there's something about the present that doesn't quite cut it. Uh, from a learning design perspective. Let's say your course is existing already and it's just not working that well. Uh, there's a gap. Something's not right. So you're looking into the future and saying, hmm, I've got a new idea or, or an idea for a course that's better, that, that's uh, better than the present state. Or alternatively, you could be sitting in your office one day and your boss could come in and say, hey, design this course. Well, the first question you have to ask yourself is this more than one question. Does it make sense? Does it fill a gap? Where does it fit? What are the learning needs that are being met here? Uh, where would be the best place to teach this? Where would it be uh, not a good idea to teach it? For example, is it a college course? Is it a community center course? Is it formal, informal? Does the idea itself make sense? Is it a market for it? So this is basically talking about a needs analysis, present state, future state. You look at the present state, and you say, okay, we want things to be different in the future, and there's a gap. We're going we're gonna to fill that gap with this course and the things that we want the students to be able to do and to know and the attitudes we want them to have or the values we want them to show. This culminates in a needs analysis proposal, which you 
give to your, your stakeholders or your funding body or whatever, when you get a green light for it, then you go to the next phase, which is to decide on a design approach. In this course, we teach two different design approaches. The first one is a competency-based approach, and this involves developing a course profile which has goals and objectives on it. Another word for that is a DACUM, which simply is an acronym for Design a Curriculum. That's the one approach. Additionally, in this approach, we're looking at performance objectives, which is a specialized form of the objective. We'll get to that in week three, four, and five for those who choose this particular approach. The second approach is outcomes-based. And you're working here with learning outcomes, an outcomes guide, and an outcomes map. Now, this is a very high level uh, kind of a summary of the approach that you're going to be taking. Don't worry too much if it's a little bit confusing for you because we'll be spending three full weeks on either competency-based and outcomes-based approaches. And uh, I'll do a, a very uh, comprehensive kitchen table talk on these things so that you will have a very clear idea of what they are and which one makes sense for you uh, for the course that you want to design or the workshop that you want to design. So once you've decided on a design approach, then you set up and you've done your, your uh, curriculum documents, you set up a course schedule, a syllabus outline. They all mean the same thing. It's a marketing document. It uh, also tells the students when they're going to take what, what they need for it, policies, uh, books, that sort of thing. Once that is done, then of course you develop lesson plans and assessment and evaluation methods for those lessons. So that's the first part of your, your uh, curriculum design process. That's the what part and the why part. Why does it make sense and what is it? What do we want the students to be able to know, to be able to do as far as skills go, and to be able to value and attitudes that, they want, we, want, that we want them to have by the end of the course? The next phase for this whole thing is, you'll notice he's looking downward towards curriculum implementation. And that's the how. You're going to be teaching the course, putting it on, seeing how it goes. After you've taught the course, you'll be taking a look at whether the needs were met. And you'll look at course evaluations. Uh, how did the students do? How did the teacher do? How was the content? How was the curriculum? Did it make sense? Was the content appropriate? Um, that sort of thing you're going to be asking yourself in order to ask the big question, were the goals that we set out to achieve achieved? So that is the curriculum design process that we're going to be following in the next eight weeks. And this brings us to the, uh, the end of our first kitchen, tables, kitchen table teachings. I hope it was valuable for you. If you have any questions, feel free either to post a, a question in the instructor forum or to send me an email if you'd like to just have a private conversation with me about anything that I've talked about or anything that you're confused about to this point. So what I'd like you to do now is go back into the, the course and take a look at those YouTube videos as a starting point and then go from there and explore. Uh, then do your activities for the first week and I'm looking forward to taking part in your, in your postings in the various forums. I will talk to you again next week.